Welcome to another episode of Mayo Movie Club, where I talk about movies that I like. Maybe they aren't the greatest movies in the world, but there's something about them to appreciate. Could be the effects, the screenplay, the humor. And if you've been following this series since the beginning, I hope you've found some new movies to love and share. I want to start this episode with a movie that's pretty new, as of the recording of this video. Sputnik, a Russian horror thriller? I'm not entirely sure on the genre of this one, I just know that I like it a lot. I love a good creepy alien movie, and this is one of the best modern alien movies I've seen. It takes place in the 80s with a Russian spaceship that has some kind of accident while in orbit. Just two men are on the craft, and when they fall to Earth and eventually get discovered, one of the men is dead, but he's been mutilated. The surviving cosmonaut is in a horrible state, his eyes solid black, and he's taken into custody by the Russian science and military department and held in a cell. The main character of the movie is a young psychiatrist that gets the attention of the department because of her unorthodox methods. They need someone to come in and talk to the man they're holding, because he claims to not remember anything about the incident. But what's really happening is that some kind of alien creature boarded the spaceship and infected the man. Does he really not remember? Is the alien affecting his thought process? Does the alien have total control? Is the alien even here? When the alien is finally revealed, it's one of the coolest creature designs in the history of sci-fi. In its look, in its behavior, and the effects are flawless. I can't tell the difference between the parts with CG and the parts that are practical effects. I'd love to see a behind the scenes feature on this one. Sputnik is tense, it's a little gory, and at the center of it all is a strong character story that leads to an emotional and satisfying conclusion. A strong recommendation for any fan of sci-fi and horror. Next up is one of my favorite indie horror films, Starry Eyes. This is another one of those movies that I simply can't say too much about. That's a bit of a trend on this series, me mentioning a movie and then saying that I can't say much about it. But it's because some movies only need a few sentences to pique your interest, and saying more would ruin the experience. There's a lot of channels out there that recommend movies to viewers but then go on to spoil the best parts or what happens near the end. I don't want to do that. So Starry Eyes is a very simple film. It has a grungy, dirty feel, which I always appreciate in a horror movie, and it's about a young aspiring actress in Hollywood. She hangs out with a bunch of other aspiring actors and writers and directors. Everyone's just looking for their big break. They're all connected by their ambitions, but there's also a lot of jealousy and resentment. She puts her heart and soul into her auditions, but she just isn't landing the parts she wants. Then one day, she gets the opportunity of a lifetime. She can become a superstar. All she has to do is sell her soul to the devil. And yeah, that's it. Do I really need to say anything else? Because I'm not gonna. Starry Eyes isn't a great movie. It's just one that has stayed with me for a long time. I've watched it three or four times, and there's something about it that makes it special. It's a solid B, and a movie you'll never forget. And while we're on movies about Hollywood, let's talk about Ed Wood, Tim Burton's masterpiece. I suppose you could say Beetlejuice and Nightmare Before Christmas are his masterpieces, but I tend to think this is his best film. Ed Wood, the person, is considered the worst movie director of all time. His earliest and most famous films are absolute cinematic disasters, the most famous of which being Plan 9 from Outer Space, which I used to own on DVD as a kid. And as bad as that movie is, his first movie, Glen or Glenda, is much, much, much worse. My introduction to Ed Wood was this movie, where Johnny Depp plays the famous director trying to get started in Hollywood. It shows his friendship with Bela Lugosi, Hollywood's first iconic Dracula, who's played by Martin Landau in what is probably the performance of his career. Supporting cast members include Sarah Jessica Parker, Bill Murray, Patricia Arquette, and it isn't just a movie laughing at Ed Wood's failures as a director. It shows him as a real person, vulnerabilities and all. You feel like you understand him by the end. 
If you've never actually seen an Ed Wood film and you watch this movie, you won't believe that his movies were actually real. You'll see stuff happening in this movie and think, no, there's no way someone put that in their movie and thought that was okay. But it's real. It really happened. This movie is funny, it's sweet, it's educational about a moment in Hollywood history. It's a must watch. <sighs> Now I want to talk about Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. This movie is upsetting. It's really good, I'm recommending it, but it bothers me. For my whole life, I've been really sensitive to depictions of real-life violence and how it becomes entertainment. I don't watch YouTube videos of people getting hurt. I've never liked watching Jackass or reality television that shows some kind of tragedy. I'm not judging anyone who does watch that stuff, but it makes me really uncomfortable. I don't even like watching sports like boxing or martial arts because it weirds me out to see injured people bleeding. I can see the most violent, disgusting movie or video game and be totally fine, but if a real person is getting hurt, I can't look at it. Nightcrawler tells the story of a man who's trying to make a living. He's stealing materials and selling them, but he wants to break into some kind of legitimate stable industry. One night he sees the aftermath of a horrible car accident, and there's some guys with cameras filming it. He learns that they turn around and sell this footage to local news programs because tragedies get good ratings. He buys his own camera and a police scanner and starts chasing down tragedies of his own. Car accidents, murders, anything violent. He forms a relationship with one of the local news channels because they like his work, and he keeps pushing the limits of what he can sell to them. Even going so far as to manipulate situations to cause violent scenes that he can eventually go on to film and sell. The man has no moral compass at all, and neither does the woman he's selling his footage to. It's a hard look at the disgusting industry of sensationalist, fear-based news that sells violence to its viewers every night and the kinds of people this industry benefits. It's a movie that leaves you wanting to take a shower afterwards because the topic is just so gross. God, Nightcrawler and Starry Eyes in the same episode? How about we end this with something light? Something like... What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? It's The Goonies, one of the best family classics of the 80s. A movie that, when you watch it, you can't help but smile. There's something about 80s adventure movies that make you feel great, whether it's Indiana Jones or Back to the Future or The Goonies. There's always something to smile about. The Goonies is about a group of misfit kids from the same neighborhood dealing with the fact that their homes are being bought out by a developer. Their families don't have the money to refuse the purchase and they're all gonna have to leave the town they love. One day, while looking through a bunch of junk in the attic, the kids come across something that appears to be a treasure map. They decide to follow it, because if it turns out to be real, they can use the money to defend their homes. There's a fun team-up between the younger kids and one of the older brothers and his two friends, so you get a fun mix of personalities as they go on their adventure. And yes, that's Thanos. The treasure map takes them through an area where they cross paths with a dangerous criminal family that ends up chasing them through the underground tunnels. So not only are the kids dealing with dangerous traps and passages, but they have killers coming after them. The Goonies is filled with moments of excitement, drama, adventure, humor, and most of all it's just got a lot of heart. It makes you feel good. It's far from a perfect film, there's entire sections that I don't like namely the school bully stuff. Some of the logic is just absurd, like being able to support the weight of a falling child with plastic chattering teeth. It's ridiculous, but it's okay, it's a silly movie, and if you obsess over stuff like that, you're missing the point. The Goonies is a great movie to watch as a kid and as an adult, so if you're a kid, you'll have fun, and if you have kids, you can watch it together. That's it for this episode of Mayo Movie Club. Thanks so much for joining me, it's always a lot of fun to talk about interesting movies with you all. These episodes are impossible to monetize due to copyright, so please consider joining my Patreon to support my work. Take care of yourselves, and we'll get to more movies soon.